right. Let's just talk about the fair. Okay. <laughs> let's start okay. and let's just rewind. <laughs> you can talk about the fair or I can talk about Dog Dash because... Oh, Dog Dash. Yeah. I just went to Dog Dash. You did go? I did go. Did uh, you run in those clothes? I did not run. Okay. I was cheering. <laughs> okay. So Dog Dash is an annual run for elementary school they students. They run a mile. Run a mile, whatever. This year, the school has the audacity to send me an email, not just me, but every parent saying, you're invited to run with your child. I was yeah. just like, that sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> I was thinking, when's the last time I've run a mile? And it could potentially be 20 years. I'm like, I'm, I'm not yeah. running a mile. No. But anyway, I kind of they sent the email a couple weeks ago. I forgot about it last night. Eleanor's like, Mom, tomorrow's the dog dash. Are you coming to run with me? And I was like, I've got to work, babe. She's like, you're not, Dad, are you coming? And he's <laughs> like, I've got, what time is it? I've got, I'm busy. So I was like, Eleanor, calm down. Let's come up with a solution. Who do we know that would run with you and it would be it would be okay? So we picked Brian's best friend, Lee. <laughs> so we texted Lee last night. Like, Brian's got meetings. I've got meetings. Is there any way you could break away from work and go run a mile with Eleanor? And Lee's like, of course I can. <laughs> so Lee and his high school senior son, Ethan, ran a mile with Eleanor. Lee sends me selfies and video of Eleanor running. Eleanor got ninth place awesome. in her grade. B got ninth place. Oh my goodness, that's amazing. Yeah. I thought Eleanor, no offense if you're listening, sis, I thought Eleanor would get maybe like, you know, towards the end. Like we're yeah. not runners. Yeah. But she ran with Ethan and with Lee and she got ninth place and a popsicle and they took all these pictures. I posted it on social media and say, if you don't do life with people, you really should. Yeah. Yeah, Ethan, I saw Ethan when I was there, and he's yeah. like, you're not running today? I was like, oh, no, no. I'm, the, I'm the cheerleader. I'm just here. I had a cowbell. Uh, Danny Monroe's Danny can Monroe cow- stopped me today yeah. and asked me if I thought if you borrowed a cowbell from her a year ago, if you would still have it. And I was like, I don't know, it Danny, but six months don't ago. ever loan her anything again. I And it's been sitting by my garage door for the Give last it back six to months. Her. I did. Okay. I did. Because I, I, I knew her daughter would be running in the dog dash. And so I was like, here's the cowbell. Uh, we just you're going to need it this, this morning. Today. I know. She was like, did Jamie call you? I was like, nope. <laughs> this is all on my own. Yeah. We were talking about you behind your back. Oh, I know. Okay. I know. It's all right. Okay. It's all good. It's all oh, good. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> the dog dash. So, yeah. So it was fun. Cheering bulldogs. be on. We're the bulldogs. We're the bull, that's our that, that mascot. Might be yeah. yeah. But it was fun to go cheer be on and see her run. And Elliot was running with her. Lucy was running. So all the cross country kids, my right. kids, were running with them. And they did it big because they had the big bulldog head, cheerleaders. The big inflatable that the kids they run through. Run, they oh, ran through awesome. it at the finish line. That's and awesome. cheerleaders were standing there oh, in their awesome. uniforms on the finish line. Yeah. yeah. Cheering everybody I would have known that if I would have gone. <laughs> but Lee, yeah. living his best life. Yeah. So it was fun. If you follow, if you don't follow me on social media, you should, and you can go look at those pictures of Lee and Eleanor. So yeah. Would you like to introduce us? Yes. Oh, oh. not really. <laughs> yes, okay. here I am. Here I am, Heather George, with my best friend Jamie Job. And this is our podcast, Life in Motion, where we talk about life, all the ups, the downs, the in-betweens, and even the stuff we're not supposed to talk about. So let's let's get get started. started. I noticed there's no tissues on our table, and there usually are, and you already look like you're about to share something. Uh, Yeah, I have. Do you ever have these moments where you... um, just like see yourself and you're like, oh my gosh, I've got a lot of work to do. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is great. I'm not going to cry. I she don't might. think I'm going to cry. She might. Because it's not a teary situation. So you've talked about generational curses in mm-hmm. that book that you're reading. Mm-hmm. And um, you just sometimes you wonder, you know, why do I do the things that I do? And how do I break out of that or yeah. whatever? And had a moment. Uh-oh this last weekend to really see some generational things play out. My dad was in town visiting. um, And for the most part, he's just like a fun loving guy. I am a lot like him. Yeah. And um, like we look alike and act alike and do a lot of the same things. And we were, it was his last night in town and um, Wit and B had gone um, out on an errand, and um, 
Fran was out of town. So it, Zuzu was home, but she was busy doing something. So Elliot and Lucy were hanging around and I would be like, this is my dad's last night. So let's just be available. Let's spend the whole evening with yeah. him. Because busy schedules, the kids go in different directions all weekend long. Sure. And I was like, let's just be here and be present and s- spend time with him. Right. Make sure that he gets to love on all of us and we love on him. So when Wit and B left for their errand, um, I was like, let's play a game. Sit down to play this game that we like, that we're all pretty well, actually. My dad and I Dutch like Blitz. No. Oh. Uh, and we're it's Quirkle. Oh, and okay. we're pretty competitive yeah, at yeah, yeah. and you it's guys, fun. And it's any, fun, but you guys are really good. And um Elliot is excellent he at is. Quirkle. And he says he doesn't like to play, which I don't understand that. Mm-hmm. And then Lucy is not that great at Quirkle, and she doesn't like to play. And But I was like, just play the game. Yeah. We're going to have a great time. Well, my kids were like, fine. <laughs> so, teenagers. Teenagers. <laughs> so we got to spend, experience our teenagers in all their glory. <laughs> and they sit down to play the game, and they are just being top-notch annoying. Oh, no. Like, just, I'll say, absolute turds. And I mean that in the most loving possible <laughs> way. Sure, sure. That, but that's the best you can say. That's the best I can say. <laughs> and it's it's just miserable to play oh, with no. games with them when they do this. And because I've, there's many times we're playing games. For some reason, my older three kids, when they get together, they can be super silly. Yeah. And when you're sitting there playing a game with them and they are being really silly, it's just, I it's no fun. It's no fun. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to say it was so fun, but oh, you no. said it's no because fun. Because you're just like, guys, <laughs> focus. Focus. P- play the game or yeah. don't play the game. I mean, they're just being so silly. I see. So for the people that are sitting there watching the silly, it just gets annoying. <laughs> anyway, they're in, being silly. They're being so annoying. And my dad and I are just getting oh, upset. No. And I, we are start getting the same physical, emotional reaction Mm -hmm. and and i can read his mind and he can read my mind and i'm starting to say things like if you guys don't knock it off we're gonna quit this game and you're gonna just go straight to bed you know Uh which i don't really want to do that i'm setting up this really (laughs) awful boundary (laughs) that awful consequence awful consequence that i really don't want to enforce but for for the love pull it together (laughs) and play the game anyway it just did not go well. Then I'm getting more annoyed. B and Wit come home, and B comes out, and she's hanging on my shoulders, and she's asking me these questions, and I'm just like, not now. And she's like, oh, okay. man. Yeah, sorry. And goes in and tells Wit, boy, mom's really upset. And I mean, this is just, you can just sense the tension oh, at no. the table. Mm-hmm. And then Wit comes out, and he's like, what's going on oh, here? No. And he, oh, no. yeah. he likes to fix it. Right. And he believes that he has enough uh, um, counselor, psychologist, therapist in him to oh, just yeah. like drill you with the right questions. Yeah. How did that go over? Not well. <laughs> and I felt like Wit came out and was taking the kid's side. Oh, like, no. Um, oh, Lucy, I know you're just being silly. Heather... Papa Dave, get over it, you know? And I'm just like, don't even. And anyway, so much tension. In this moment while you're feeling all of that, do you know that maybe there's some emotional reaction that is unhealthy or not Oh, yeah. I'm just curious. Uh, Because, like, can I just let this go? No, of course not. And enjoy the game? No. Right. No. And... I'm better at it than my like. I'm getting better at it than I my dad. You were gonna say I'm better at Quirkle than them. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. No, I would definitely. Elliot's probably the best yeah. Quirkle player, and I'll give okay. him that. But <laughs> I am, I'm getting better than my dad. Where I'm just like, I'm gonna let this go. Yeah. But my dad is far worse, and will hold it against you. Will say unkind things, mm. and he didn't say anything to their face. Which was good. <laughs> right. and we have to go through this whole thing. Right. But Wit's out there just needling me. What's your what are your expectations? Oh, no. What what do you want the outcome of this to be? Oh, no. Why are you acting like this? Oh, in no. front of the kids, you yeah. know, in front of my dad. And I'm just like, finally, wit. Yeah. Quit. Knock it off. Yeah. Quit. You're not helping. 
And so he goes inside. I mean, it was just awful. And it was this moment, the, the conversation with Wit went on for hours, essentially, in bits and pieces. And I'm like, stop, because he just yeah. keeps trying to be the therapist in the family, and it's not helping. But it was so painful to see my dad react this way, and then I am mirroring that yeah. t- or replaying that mm-hmm. like this. And this is what I remember from my childhood, mm. is that you would get in these situations where you would get a parent that's just seething, mm-hmm. and you're tiptoeing around them because yeah. you don't know how to get out of that situation or act normal, and there's no conversation about what um, what's really happening, mm-hmm. what are you right. upset about, what are you expecting from me. Right. And then the next day, um, I am get an email from one of Elliot's teachers, Uh-oh. and he's having some issues behaviorally in class, and we start talking to him, and you just see the same right. thing come over him, where he's just going to be... He's angry with me because or with wit or whatever, or the consequences, because it's not fair and you don't understand me, but you just see that same shutdown happening. Do you see that same behavior in Lucy? I'm Um, only asking, and this is why I'm asking. It seems being an outsider looking in, but yet being relatively close, it seems like the kids that can get you, the, that can just poke the bear, so to mm-hmm. speak, seem to be Lucy and Elliot with you. I wonder yeah. if you see that in her as well. Just curious. Not so much. Like, okay. With Elliot, it's, <clears throat> I, I um, Elliot is an incredible kid, and I appreciate so many things about him. Uh, but what I see in him is sometimes like looking in a mirror. Mm-hmm. When we're in the middle of an argument, a disagreement, when I'm trying to get him to just do his stuff without making yeah. excuses or become defensive, yeah. it's like seeing myself <clears throat> all over again. Wow. And it's so uncomfortable. It's like looking in a mirror and you're just like hideous. That is just hideous. The behavior, not that the be- kid. The he's behavior. Real he is real cute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, Lucy is different that a lot of times she, I I, un, I understand what she's doing to a certain extent, but she's different that a lot of the ways that she responds okay. or interacts puzzle me. Like, I wouldn't, you know, I would never, my go-to, the way that I respond to situations or get stuff mm-hmm. done or interact with people is different than her. So what, what I see from her is like, I, I'm puzzled. Yeah. Like, I... I Boy, my go-to would be this, okay. and she's behaving differently. Interesting. Elliot is like looking in okay. a, a mirror sometimes, and it's not fun. I was just trying to play counselor for yeah. a second. Just call me wit. Yeah, okay, Huge wit. surprise there. <laughs> I was just thinking, I wonder if sometimes, you mentioned maybe last week that sometimes you avoid, and I wonder if sometimes Lucy avoids. So maybe it's not the outward expression of the avoidance, but it's the, I was just yeah, curious. Yeah, probably Lucy avoids, <clears throat> um, she stuffs her emotions and things and will close herself off. You're going to be shocked by this. Yes. I think you and Lucy are more alike than you realize. We probably are. But I avoid, and Elliot avoids by becoming defensive and argumentative. And so um, I do stuff my feelings, but then like when I'm confronted... I have a lot of excuses. I get defensive. Oh, there comes Elliot. And that's okay. Elliot's <laughs> yeah. go-to. Yeah. And But when I'm upset about something, I'll do Lucy, and I'm going to stuff it all down, and then it'll just explode on you this one day. This is so hard to grow up. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and I don't mean my children. I mean me. Oh, this is so I knew, hard. I, it's like... Yeah. I knew I was being childish or not even childish, but like be the bigger person here. Like, how do you love your kids through this? And 
anyway, we had to have this whole thing where we're apologizing to each other yeah. later in the night. And I'm thankful for Wit because he's a really good mediator. Yeah. I don't like it when he puts on his counselor hat right, and right. tries to probe right. you with questions. That's no bueno. You know what we should do? I don't know if you know this or not, but we have an upcoming all staff yeah. meeting and Brian and Wit are doing a session on conflict resolution. <laughs> and I feel like we should be there. We should be there. <laughs> because they are going to be able to resolve their conflict relatively easily. It's yeah. when we get in the mix that things get yeah. really exciting. We'll just sit on the front row and raise our hands. Like, point of contention. <laughs> um, but anyway... I had to apologize to my kids for um, not expressing my frustration mm. and anger. You know, I wasn't necessarily angry, but frustration to the point. I need to get out a feelings chart to really map where I was feeling. Yeah. But it definitely frustration um, that I'm just, I'm just seething yeah. to them. I'm letting them know my displeasure sure. without words. Just in my behavior mm -hmm. and my body language, I'm going to let you know how unhappy I am with you. But I'm not going to clearly express what you're doing that's making me unhappy. Read my mind. Read my mind. <laughs> right. And I'm not going to lay out an expectation of, this is how I expect you to behave for the here on out of this game that we're playing. Okay. Like your, their behavior was unacceptable, in my opinion. How and do you how do you live that out in that moment when your dad is there also? Because I I'm learning like I can only change the course of my behavior and even train my kids to respond in a healthy way, but I can't expect the generation above me to want to go on this journey. So mm -hmm. it's interesting. You're having these aha moments and it sounds like you have opportunity to maybe walk into some freedom in some areas that you, you've you not yet walked in. That doesn't mean Papa Dave wants to do that. Right. So how how did you navigate this with him in your home at the same time? That that seems terrifying to me. Yeah. Just curious. Uh, um, let's see. So it, it was... It, it was pretty tense, and the side story happening is B and Zoo had planned a fall festival in the backyard, oh. and they had planned a few carnival oh, games yeah. and things like this, and so we we had played the game to kill time until Wit and B got back from their errand, oh, so we were waiting for that to start. So we're like, let's hurry up and get this game finished so we can go do the fall festival. There's so much tension that... You know, and my dad will just kind of say what is on his mind. Okay. And um, did he in that moment? Like, what he did. He, so, what did he say? So, when Elliot and Lucy got up from the table, he was like, I am not playing that game with them again. And he might have okay. even said more. Um, and I told Wit, I, I, when they left, I was like, Wit, that was not helpful for you to come in and take their side. I felt like you were taking their mm -hmm. side. You missed the whole first half of the game when they're yeah. acting out in different ways. And some of it's silly. Some of it was, I felt like, bad sportsmanship. Okay. And you come in and you take their side in front of them. Mm -hmm. And my dad pipes in. He's like, yeah, you don't need to treat Heather that way. And, you know, oh, something goodness. like that. Oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> and Wit's like, Dave, you don't need to tell me how to treat my wife. <laughs> And I mean, yeah. And Wit's like, I'm, that's why I was wondering, yeah. how did this play out with your dad? And it's one thing for you to grow in emotional health, yeah, and to to pass that along to your kids. It's a whole nother ball game, yeah. Anyway, and we have had. I think my dad, to a certain extent, is willing to grow in his emotional health. He sees yeah. the health of our family, sure. whatever it is. Sure, Th that's at least one step beyond. Yes. <laughs> It's one step beyond the generation before, but he's so he recognizes we've had incidences with him where we're just like, you know, you said this and it was hurtful, mm -hmm. and he will apologize. And then, um, and but then he his tendency is to get really down on himself right. and be like, oh, I'm, uh, and I'm like, Dad, it's yeah. forgiven, it's forgotten, we're not talking about it again, and we move on. 
and model that for him. Yeah, like, yeah. We're not going back there. We're not rehashing it. There's nothing else. It's fine. It's done. It's over. And so he's when he spends time with us, he's growing in that sure. as well. I see and that. So I had my kids. I was like, you guys need to go apologize for being so annoying. That w- really was miserable. Mm-hmm. And they went and did, and he accepted their apology. And by the end of the night, I mean, this hours, everything what happened was worked to fall out. Festival? We went out to fall festival. Okay. There was tension. <laughs> I bet so. My dad stayed inside. He did okay. not go to fall he festival. Did not he was like, he needed in the some space, but festival. and Witt's still trying to have the conversation. I'm like, don't yeah. quit. <laughs> I, I, it's so, you think like, I, I'm doing really good. And then yeah. you come into this situation of yeah. three generations bringing yeah. behaviors that they've learned and seeing how this plays out and how do I put a stop to it? How do I break it? How do yeah. I walk this out in a healthy way? that my kids can learn from mm, and yeah. do better. And then when their kids come along, maybe this isn't even an issue. Right, right. Hopefully. Yeah. Yes. I so. do believe that we can break gener- generational curses. And I'm glad that we have some time. And we've got some older kids and some younger kids. I'm glad we have some time to learn and grow. Um, you know, as you're talking, I was just thinking – about Cooper and where he and I are right now. Because we started this season, I mean, most people will remember that I was going to work on my relationship with Cooper (laughs) throughout the season, (laughs) which lasted about one week and then it was all fixed. (laughs) Um, And I wouldn't say all fixed, but we are, he has seen, and in in his words, and I'm, I'm praying and believing this for you with your kids, like in Cooper's words, he's told me, I see you trying. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, for a 16-year-old to say that is, is really uh, touching. Mm-hmm. I see you trying. And, you know, he just went back to school this week after having 10-day quarantine for COVID. And those 10 days with him at home were so fun. Yeah. Because he wasn't feeling terrible. And, I mean, he was bored. Everybody's at school. Like, you can't really text your friends because they're in class. And he's just talking to me all day. And we're just spending time together and hanging out and, Honestly, I would never wish another 10-day quarantine on him. He's Mm -hmm. very social. I wouldn't want him to have to be isolated like that again. But it was so good for us. Yeah. Um, And I'm learning more about him. I'm learning how much my insecurities I project onto my kids. Like if, if I am feeling insecure in this situation, sometimes about their behavior, Mm -hmm. like they are out of control right now and it's making me uncomfortable. And so then I'm projecting Mm -hmm. my displeasure on them when really I should take myself out of it and be like, and you know, draw the line. You're not going to act that way while we play the game. Here's the, but instead I just like, you're making me uncomfortable and I feel insecure. And then I'm projecting that back on you and then it's getting ugly. And Cooper and I are in a season of growing individually, but yet together. Mm -hmm. Uh, While he was home on quarantine, his small group leaders um, reached out to him, you know, just FaceTime. We want to pray for you. So sweet. But they also were like, we want to send you two meals. Like, we're going to door dash a couple of meals. I can afford to to get him food while he's home. But it wasn't about the finances, and it wasn't even about the food. It was about him, Cooper, seeing other adults mirroring the goodness of God onto him. Mm-hmm. So well, meaningful. Well, because you buying him meals is just means, what you're supposed yeah, to do. It just means really nothing. Yeah. Just watching him grow, and he, he said something the other day that I just thought, this season that you and I are in mm-hmm. on growing in our emotional health, I'm seeing more and more opportunities to train my kids up. Yeah. Um. Yeah. To learn how to, at least to tell them, I'm recognizing that when I'm uncomfortable in a situation with you, I get angry and I project all of that onto you and I'm working on it. Mm -hmm. Now, Eleanor's a little young to understand that, but I'm being really open with Cooper and Chase on Mm -hmm. that. And it's it's changing the dynamic with us. Heather, I'm real proud of you. Oh, thanks. I just, I think this (laughs) season we started, and honestly, I was a little... I was thinking, I'm the only one that's going to have to do the hard work. Me too. (laughs) (laughs) 
I was thinking Heather's going to like look at a list of words and circle the ones that look like her and decide what she's going to do for the next 20 years of her life. I'm going to live my best life. She's going to live her best life. (laughs) And I'm going to do some excavating and and, um, hard work with Cooper. And you have recognized and seen some things in yourself. It's really amazing. Yeah. I think the sky's the limit for your relationship with your kids. Absolutely. I mean, God restores time. Yeah. And it's it's never too late to change and to grow and I'm I and really I, and I, you know, it's when your kids see you trying. Yes. That the, then they can receive from you when you say um I apologize. Yeah. I shouldn't have been so angry with you. I should have laid out my expectations right. clearly or whatever, but I, that was unacceptable for me yeah. to carry on that bad attitude with you. So yeah. I, I'm sorry. I apologize for that. That gives you permission to then say, I see this happening yes. in you, and I want to help you walk it out that that doesn't become a habit in your life. Right. And what an opportunity we, you and I, Mm -hmm. and collectively everyone that's in this with us through life in motion, what an opportunity we have. Because I will say probably at least for a decade, I've thought, man, I see every one of my negative tendencies in my kids. <laughs> like, yeah. like, oh, he, Chase is responsible like Brian. He has a bad attitude like me, though. So I mean, he got yeah. that one from me. And this kid <laughs> talks back all the time, just like me. And this, I've seen it, but not known what to do with it. Yeah. And I'm coming into a season where through through counseling, through study, through going back to school and and growing up spiritually, through all these different avenues, I'm seeing like, opportunities to turn things around. Mm-hmm. And I see it in you and your kids as well. It's yeah, exciting. It is it's exciting. really and it's I, hopeful. It's so hopeful. And I do, I don't want to let this moment pass without saying your kids don't have to still live in your house for them to see you changing. Absolutely. I feel like one of our friends came to episode one, the recording, mm-hmm. our friend Kat. And um, her kids were out of the house for a long time. Yeah, they've been out for when years. she began began making some changes, and has restored relationship with two adult kids mm-hmm. that I I think at one point she thought it will never happen. Mm-hmm. So you know, you and I are in the thick of kids in our house, but I yeah. mean, the opportunity when you lean into God and do it His way and just say... It's never too late. I'm not going to just keep doing the same old thing I've always done. Yeah. Just because it was handed to me and it's so easy to do it this way, mm-hmm. I'm going to I'm gonna do the hard thing and make some changes. Yeah. I was listening to a podcast, and it's probably similar to what you've been learning mm-hmm. with your ego and your response yeah. and blah, blah, blah. They blah, just, blah, blah, blah. That's blah, how blah. you feel about my growth. Well, we don't... <laughs> if you want to listen to Jamie ramble on about her ego and how she protects and whatever, I've already you can so, go back and listen to past episodes. I've already seeds <laughs> into Brian's topic and discussion on um, about conflict resolution, about the ego response. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, blah, blah, so blah. So this podcast described that everyone has a core self. It's who you are. It's yeah. what you were born with. And, you know, there are... Some people with the Enneagram would debate, well, that's something that's learned or that's born into you. Sure. And I think there are things that you learn, things that you're born in, with, but you, everybody has a core self. Right. And this podcast was describing the core self, and then you have all these parts that then protect. And this um, counselor described it like an orchestra, that your core self is the conductor and you have all the instruments. Mm-hmm. And when you're not connected to what's happening with your core self, yeah. all those instruments are playing their own thing and they all want to take over and they all want to lead. And it sounds terrible. Yeah. So you need to be in touch with your core self to figure out, to give direction to all these pieces of yourself and how they show up. Yeah. So uh, your protector and that. Right. Response is a beautiful thing. When used the right way. When used the right way. It's right. beautiful. Thanks. So, but not knowing why that protector shows up inappropriately right. gets you into trouble. And even just, just, I mean, I'm not very far along on the journey, but just even knowing now what that 
pro- when that protector jumps in because it's all the time. Yeah, knowing that it jumps in in a split second without me thinking, that's very helpful. Yeah, that's very helpful to begin. You know, it makes me think, Heather. Let's. Um, we're just about out of time, but let's link in our show notes um, that podcast. Okay. Um, Dr. Caroline Leaf's most recent book would be beneficial, and I'm going to go ahead and do it, guys. I'm going to link the book that I'm reading because it's very, very helpful. But don't you slide into our DMs telling us this person's not a Christian and blah, 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 because I know. Yeah. So you're going to have to put it under submission to the Lordship of Jesus if you want to read it. You don't have to. She does not live the same kind of lifestyle as I do. But she's very knowledgeable. But she's very knowledgeable. So oh. this podcast, they said, um, sh- when you are experiencing these other parts showing up, mm-hmm. in, so the... Um, counselor that was talking used her anxiety as an example. Yeah. Like, instead of trying to fix her anxiety, she started to look at her anxiety as a dashboard. Exactly. A light on her exactly. dashboard. And that when she starts feeling the anxiety, those symptoms, physical symptoms, yeah. emotional symptoms Shortest that go, breath, on, things, go along tightness. with it. What is happening to her core self? Why is the anxiety yeah. showing up? And so she, like the top thoughts that she uses, top words that she uses in those moments are curiosity and compassion. So being able to ask yourself, yeah. okay, what's happening here? Like I'm sitting at this game with my dad mm-hmm. and my kids and the kids are behaving this way and my dad is getting mad. What's happening? Yeah. Curiosity. Stay How does this in play a state out? of curiosity. That's what I've learned in counseling. Yeah. Stay in the state of curiosity. And then compassion for yourself. Oh, for yourself. That's because good. you there's a reason. There's something that you've learned. There's yes. something that yeah. you're protecting yeah. in these situations. So you know, have compassion for yourself and that core self yes. and who you are and how can you, you know, love and yourself in it, that. Be brave enough to to ask the Lord, are these beliefs that I've had since childhood, are they still serving me well, or would you like me to set them down? Mm-hmm. Because sometimes the way we have always done things, we just don't know any different. Yeah. And I believe that he would say, behold, I'm doing a new thing. Mm-hmm. Time to set that one down. And, oh, Heather, we could talk for so long. I'm so excited for you. One question. Mm-hmm. So you're you're listening to podcasts from counselors. Mm-hmm. You're you're doing the things, mm-hmm. but you're not can- canceling your counseling appointment that's coming up in a few no, weeks. No, absolutely just, not. I, I mean, just wonder if, if you anything, were gonna... it just even highlights. Yes, okay. keep moving okay. forward. You I don't have this figured there out. There could be the temptation to go. I'll figure this out on myself. Yeah, figure this out myself. No, no. Which, it's a I, great start. Yeah, it's a great start. Listen to some of the uh, one of the, on that podcast. She was like creating space to. Explore yeah. how you show up to protect your core self and who your core self really is. Yeah, and I think that there's opportunity to do that in small groups, yeah. with friendships, with counselors. But yeah. I have to. I'm not going to do that by myself. I'm not going to create the space when I'm having uncomfortable right. feelings. Of well, and, yeah, and you do it in community. You do so it in somebody community, gives you a different yeah. perspective mm-hmm. and. So, so good. Okay, what have you done in the last week to bring you and those around you, or those, whatever, to bring people joy in the last week? What have you done? Oh, we played Quirkle. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my goodness. That did not bring joy. Yeah. Come up with something else. Okay. (laughs) my goodness. (laughs) We went to the fair last night. It was a lot of fun. Why is it called the Tulsa State Fair? Because we're not a state, but go ahead. Don't worry about it. Don't even, uh, we're not even getting into that. Do you want me to explain it to you? Okay. okay. Uh, um, went to the fair, tried out some mattresses. You laid on at, mattresses at the fair? Yeah. Oh my gosh. The, the adjustable oh. ones. Go How many other down. people do you think had laid on this? I don't know. Okay, I just gross. didn't think about it. I okay. Didn't think okay, about go ahead. It. Looked at the hot tubs, <laughs> looked at some barns, thought about putting a shed in the backyard so we could move Fran out of the house. <laughs> oh my goodness. He'll be fine in a shed, right? He would be. He would be. I feel like he lived in a barn at one point, so he's yeah, be true, fine. he did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Rode a couple of rides, oh played goodness. a couple of games, watched a baby pig be born. Uh, we stood there and waited, and finally it just squirted out. It was fun. Oh 
missed Vanilla Ice. <laughs> Vanilla Ice was at the Tulsa State Fair, and had I known, I would have gone. That I, had I known, right back that would have been days. top priority. Oh my goodness, yeah, <laughs> it was fun. Oh, I would have people go- watching. Gone. Yeah, that's interesting. I may have to. And I say have to, not get to, but have to. I may have to take Eleanor to the fair this weekend. Um, we, ha- what brought me joy, um, and brought those around me joy this week was Brian is a huge OU fan. He graduated from OU, and he and my boys watch all the OU football games and all that. So OU plays Texas at the Texas State Fairgrounds every year. It's a really big game and it's at the fair and you can get a corn dog and ride rides and watch the game and lots and lots of people. Um, And my kids have grown up playing sports, so they usually have Saturday sporting events. Mm -hmm. And they're old enough now that their sports uh, through the school are on weekdays. And so they're free on Saturday. So Brian surprised them with a trip they're going this weekend to go to the OU Texas game and go to the Texas State Fair. They're going to stay a couple of nights in a hotel and go to Shake Shack and do some stuff. Have a nice boys trip. Yeah, have a boys trip. And they didn't see it coming. So it was really fun to tell them that they're going. So they've always wanted to, never been able to. I'm really excited for them. And then on the flip side, we'll have a little girls staycation and go to the fair, which just <laughs> does not sound that exciting to me. But Eleanor and I will go to the fair and uh, maybe do some other girly stuff yeah. together. I mean, let's get a pedicure or something. Why would we want to watch a pig be born when we could get our toenails painted? But, but you anyway, you don't get to see a pig be born every day. We might. We might <laughs> see one. We might just... You might. Just... Squeeze, squeeze that, that, <laughs> squeeze that belly. Like oh my goodness. <laughs> anyway, thanks for joining us. Um, if you have gotten something from today, maybe you see yourself somewhere in our stories, uh, we would love for you to share that with us anonymously. You can text the words life in motion to the number 23101, follow the prompts, and just let us know where you are on your journey. The reason we do this every week is it's really not for us. It's for you Mm -hmm. because it's so much easier. But it's helping us. It is helping us. It is helping (laughs) us to know that we're not alone, seriously. The texts you send us, um, the messages to 23101 really are invaluable to us because it's hard to share some of these things. Mm -hmm. When you start saying, here's the ugly side of me, welcome. But anyway, (laughs) we want you to, to journey along with us. And sometimes it's so helpful when you send a message and just say, I'm putting it out there, bringing it into the light. So text us. The words Life in Motion to 23101. Share this message, subscribe to our podcast, and we'll see you next week on Life in Motion. Thanks.